If you've been watching our channel lately, there have been a lot of videos on Texas. And I knew that was going to happen because three months in Texas is a long time and there's a lot of things to do there. So I expected we would have a lot of videos from there. What I didn't anticipate was three videos alone just on San Angelo. And this is the third video on San Angelo. <laughs> I mean, Texas is a big state. Don't get me wrong. And we covered a lot of it. And our, our last adventure found us over in the San Angelo area, which many people have never heard of San Angelo. So we'll try to describe it for you. It's sort of in the west of hill where it's like where hill country meets prairie meets the desert meets like basically the geographic center of texas and i mean texas is so large that it is kind of hard to figure out where that is so we'll, we'll put a map here so you can actually see where we're talking about um and the area is probably most known if you have ever heard of San Angelo. It's probably for Goodfellow Air Force Base. Um, but there's also just a lot to see and do there. And if you haven't seen our other videos about San Angelo State Park and the hiking and everything there, definitely go check those out because those are some kind of the big things to do in San Angelo. But as we discovered, the town of San Angelo itself actually has a lot to offer. Well, I think one of the reasons we ended up with a third video of San Angelo is it's really a lot of different personalities in that area in, in terms of things that are there. You have the history and because of its location, it's it's right near three branches of the Concho River. So anytime you're talking 1800s river country, you know, it, it was uh, a huge area for cattle drives. It was a huge area for sheep. It ended up becoming like the largest sheep market in the United States was in San Angelo. Uh, the railroads ended up coming through. Uh, there there was an oil field at one point that started because of its location. So it was just in a prime spot for a lot of things to go on with economic booms and, and population booms. But there also were a number of decisions made by the U.S. military. You mentioned Goodfellows Air Force Base. It actually started back in like the 1850s with Fort Concho, which is one of the first frontier forts that they had out in that area. Uh, and then later they created, I think it was 1940, was Goodfellows Airfield, the very first start of all of that. And then you have in the 50s, Goodfellow Air Force Base ended up getting set up as an intelligence training center for all branches of the military. And part of the Strategic Air Command is located there as well. I think it's their long range radar if that's still there. So you can see how all of that sort of comes together and, and just creates this hubbub of activity. If you visit San Angelo, definitely check out Fort Concho. It's actually one of the more well-preserved forts that are left in Texas. And there's something like 24 buildings either still standing or that have been reconstructed and sort of reincarnated to look like what they were when it was, you know, in, in use as a fort. They have a lot of displays set up so you can see what the barracks looked like, what the kitchen looked like, um, you know, like the different quarters, the hospital. I mean, it really gives you a, an idea of sort of like what frontier what life was like for these military men who were at the time way out in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Uh, but you've got the parade grounds, the stables. So that was actually really cool. I, I was impressed at how well preserved it was and the what they've been able to do to recreate some of it. Well, they also have a number of history displays there about the Buffalo Soldiers, which is many of them were stationed there at Fort Concho. And for anybody who's not familiar with that term, Buffalo Soldiers generally refers to the African-Americans who served in uh, the military in the U.S. Army at that time. And I did a little research on that because I'd always wondered about why Buffalo Soldiers. And it turns out it was the Native Americans, the warriors on the Great Plains, ended up referring to the black soldiers because of, they said, because of their courage and because of their, their um, black curly hair. They ended up comparing them to buffaloes, which was actually a great compliment at the time because that's, you know, the, the bravery and the courage and, and, and their strength. And so that's what they called them. And it ended up becoming what they were known as. And so Buffalo soldiers were stationed at Fort Concho. It was a big area for them for a long time. And it, it was, I thought it was really neat to see it. Again, not all of it's original, but the preservation that they've done of what's there and then the recreation of some of the other was, was really interesting to see how it was all laid out. There is a visitor center there where you can pop in and get a map and get some information on it. The day we happened to visit, one of the docents was doing a little demonstration with one of the old like rifle musket bayonets that the soldiers used to carry. And um, I'm just shy of five feet tall and this thing was taller than I was and, and they let me carry it and kind of pretend and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know how you'd ever carry something like this into battle. So kudos to the soldiers who had to carry these things and actually try to fight with them because this thing was redonkulous, <laughs> at least, at least for me. Um, but they do do, uh, 
what is it, uh, reenactments and a couple times a year, at least once a year, I know, I don't know with COVID right now if they're doing it, but they, but they did have displays where you can go and they will do sort of like a whole reenactment on the parade ground. So if you get a chance to visit that, I think that would be really cool to see. But yeah, make sure you stop in the gift shop, check it out. They do have some other displays in there as well. And just make sure you get some information on the fort itself while you're there. Yeah, that's right. In the, the gift shop area, then they, they have sort of a mini museum almost of, of artifacts and things from the area. And then as you're walking through the fort and checking out the different buildings, you'll stumble upon, as we did, unless I guess you do the research and know it's there, the uh, Museum of Telephony, as it's referred to. <laughs> Otherwise known as the place to see all the really cool old telephones. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> telephony is a word. But yeah, it, I mean, they have everything from some of the very original Alexander Graham Bell handsets that he made. There's there's one there they have. I think there were only five made total, and they have one of them still preserved in this museum. And and it's everything from, you know, those phones from Alexander Graham Bell all the way up into the, the modern stuff that's here. And it was really interesting <laughs> to see how telephones have changed over time and, you know, how we used to have operators and that whole system. Right. And I really like that they have a couple... I, I guess I don't know what you'd call them, yeah, the operator stations, but they were like in a hotel or at a main company where you'd have all the different switches and, and where they went and, and the numbers. And, and so that was just really cool to see um, how that worked and then how the long distance charges worked because there's like a little dial that they'd turn and then it would like tick back. And, uh, you know, for those of us who are, you know, so used to just picking up this thing and dialing and using it more as a camera than a phone, I mean, it was quite amazing to see what what all was there and it was cool to see not just the telephones but all of the equipment and sort of the history behind the scenes in terms of you know like the old insulators and what the linemen used to go through and sort of like the back end of the telephone system so it it is it's just kind of tucked in one of the old houses there on the fort grounds and if you didn't happen to know about it and it was not marked on the fort map because the fort map was really about the fort not this so make sure you you do check that out because i think that was actually a really hidden gem that we found it was really confusing when we walked up on it and at first we didn't know if the door was going to be locked or not and we we tried it and it opened we went in we're like are we supposed to be in here now but no it's legit it's just a it's a little museum within the fort so I, it was different but it was really neat to see Actually, before you visit the fort or anything else in San Angelo, your first stop really should be the San Angelo Visitor Center. Not only is it a wealth of information, but it's just a really cool building right along the river. They did a fantastic job when they built this thing, and it's kind of a work of art just on its own. But when you stop in there, you can pick up all sorts of brochures and all the things there is to do there. Uh, the volunteers that are working there are really knowledgeable and know exactly what to tell you about what to do, where to go, what to see, what to eat. Uh, we probably spent a good 45 minutes talking to the gentleman at the visitor center, and he gave us a whole bunch of history on the people of San Angelo and all these cool things that we should see that we probably would not have done otherwise because we just didn't know that much about it. So that should be your first stop before you do anything in San Angelo. Well, and if I remember correctly, they've won a number of awards as a visitor center. Yeah because of not just its design, but the way it's operated and, and the information they have available there. So a great place to stop. Yeah. And I mean, it is right along the Concho River, right downtown San Angelo, and you can walk out the back of it and walk right down the back. They've got a little waterfall and a garden area. Um, and then you can just walk right from there into the town of San Angelo and see what there is to do. That could actually be a good place to start the river walk. I mean, if you wanted to see, that's a big part of the town is being able to walk along the river. There's there's sidewalks on both sides. One side's much more developed. It's the side that, that we're downtown, actually, is a little more developed, I think, than the side where the visitor center is. But there's bridges, there's pedestrian bridges and vehicle bridges across the river in several different locations. So make sure you take a chance to kind of wander that. And we actually spent an afternoon. We just wandered around for a while, and then we'd sat in the grass by the river and read books and just kind of hung out and it was a, a really nice relaxing time. Yeah, their river walk itself has actually won awards too. They've done a fantastic job of revitalizing their riverfront. So you said you've got the grassy areas, you've got a number of benches, you've got a number of restaurants along there, and they've even got a whole section um, that's sort of set up as a like a mini park. There's sand volleyball courts, there's uh, like mini golf, um, and just a number of different things to do along there. And, and even the day that we were visiting, all that stuff was well in use. I mean, people, tons of people were down there hanging out. There are some art, you know, art installations where they've painted under the bridge and they've installed some like little things for the kids to do and like musical instrument kind of things that I was playing around with. And yeah, I just have to say that they have done a fantastic job on their riverfront. 
part of what they do the displays there, and there's a number of them around town, is they have these the vehicles, the, like the old oh, yeah. vehicles that have been covered <laughs> in tile. I mean, it's it's works of art, but it's just you know painstakingly covered in different tiles. And I think there's a we we and I don't know if it was down in the riverfront or somewhere else, but I think there's a pickup truck. Um, there's a Volkswagen Beetle. There's just a number of different vehicles that that's oh. been done to. And they were really cool. And and they actually encourage you to go up and touch them. I mean, they've got b benches built in where they want you to sit and like take your picture and let the kids climb on them. So I think I have to say that a lot of times you'd see those and it'd be like, do not touch, stay away. And in this case, like they want you to sort of, you know, be part of the experience, I guess. It's a, it's a big thing for them. You know, I found that out throughout San Angelo, whether it was through the visitor center or the, the artwork that's been done or the river walk, the, the historic downtown is you mentioned, you know, they want you to be a part of it. I, I just felt really welcome there as we wandered around and, and people wanted you to learn about the town and know things. There is, you know, a bigger part of the city that's more modern, but the downtown, the, the original historic downtown street, there's a number of buildings there from the 1800s that are still there. And it's really neat to wander. And though there's a general store uh, that's open there and there's just there's different restaurants and businesses that are in the original old buildings I, you know we're big history buffs so that was really neat to see that but that was something that i i really enjoyed seeing that original old downtown street i mean yeah because we're, we're talking you know, late 1800s early 1900s so it's really cool and and there is one building and unfortunately uh, uh, this particular attraction was not open because of covid um but they discovered a number of years ago that down underneath a couple of the buildings are these like hidden passageways that were used during the time of like prohibition. And so they connected places like, it was supposed to go to the bank, but it really went to like one of the saloons, you know, like a couple streets down, but underneath the city. And sometimes they will let you go down and sort of take a look into those passageways. But unfortunately we didn't get to do it, but we, we heard all about it. So it sounds really cool. I kind of want to back up a little bit because we talked about the, the, Concho River, and that's what runs through town. Uh, one of the things that it's known for is the Concho Pearl. It's a freshwater pearl that's only found, you know, in these specific um, mollusks and you know oysters that are in the in the Concho River, and so it's very specific to this area. And there's a really cool uh, like mermaid statue that's out in the river, you know, as part of the River Walk, and it's holding one of those pearls. So that's kind of a must see if you're you're along the river there. And there's a couple jewelry stores downtown that are known for selling the pearls. So uh, that's just kind of one of the things that San Angelo is known for. Another thing that San Angelo is known for that is very unique and literally only to San Angelo is the International Water Lily Collection. It is uh, located in one of the, the local parks downtown, Civic League Park. It is essentially sort of the work of one man who for many, many years has been sort of the curator, collector, cultivator of water lilies, every type of water lily possible. He's he's bred them, um, helped make new ones. He's, you know, risked life and limb with the alligators and swamps to find unique ones. Uh, and we're talking all over the world. And he's even helped countries like Egypt uh, sort of reestablish their lilies, the 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 Egypt lily or water lily, or Nile lily, that's what it's called, the Nile Nile something lily. I'm sure there's a very scientific name for it. Um, but it goes back to biblical times and it was in paintings and artwork from biblical times, but it had gone extinct. And he actually happened to have some in his collection. And so he was help, able to help introduce it to the Nile region. But anyway, so you go to downtown San Angelo and in this park are these huge ponds where, you know, every summer he brings out a portion of his collection. So every year it's a little bit different in which lilies you can see. But it's just really, really cool. And unfortunately, while we were there over the winter and after especially the hard frost and the snow that we'd had, um, we didn't really get to see hardly any of them because a few of them had, had died. Um, but if you see the pictures from the summertime, it's just amazing. And and we're talking everything from like little tiny water lilies to these giant four foot around lilies that they'll even let like little kids sit on and take pictures because they're that big. It was, I actually, I really want to go back and see this when it's like in full bloom. <laughs> right. We were there in March, right? Yeah. And it was, it was still cold and we had gone through the hard winter storm <laughs> that lasted about a week in February. So it, that, that was the thing where it really kind of impacted. Now they do say that there are lilies that will bloom year round. I think we didn't get to see very many, even of those because of, it had been so storm. cold yep. and it normally isn't that cold there. So that didn't help. But yeah, I would really like to get back when it's in full bloom. We've seen some of the pictures. It, it's really, really pretty. It was nice that we were there in March. It was kind of a nice, a sunny, cool day when we were there a couple of days while we were there. Uh, and one of the things we got to see was all of the artwork. We've mentioned the vehicles that, that have the tiles on them, that kind of thing. But there's also a program that they started a few years back where they had artists come in. And, and there is just a ton of different types of art 
throughout downtown San Angelo. Yeah, one of the things they're known for is their big murals. So you can walk through or drive around San Angelo and there are these huge murals painted on the side of buildings kind of representing the different parts of the region. So one mural might be sort of representing um, like the old 1800s and, and the farmers moving in. There's one for Goodfellow Air Force Base. There's one for, uh, I think, like the fort. So it's just, you kind of got to wander around because there's literally art everywhere. They also have... Um, like the sheep. I think people have seen the different like cows in Chicago and, and different cities have like the different animals that are painted and businesses, you know, sponsor them. And so in San Angelo's case, it's sheep. And so they're everywhere and they're really kind of cool to see all the different ways that they've been painted. In addition to all of the sheep and the murals and everything around town, they also have something called Art and Unusual Places. And they have two specific locations. One is called Pop Art and the other one is Paintbrush Alley. And this is where they've kind of gone in uh, vacant buildings or vacant lots, I guess you would say, and then old, you know, the old alleys between the buildings. And they've let artists come in and paint basically whatever they can. And it's just really cool because all of a sudden you're like, you'll look up at a window and there'll be a face peering out. And then there's like a boat up against a wall that's painted. And then just the brick. And some of it's, it's so cool because it's like 2D, but it's 3D. And then my favorite was this truck. It was like the back end of a truck painted on the wall, but the bed or the, the, Tailgate. tailgate actually was 3d sticking out of the wall and then there was one with a tree that was painted and then there was a swing that was 3d hanging from it so they just did a really good job and it's a really good way to repurpose some of those areas i mean nobody's going to walk down an alley that's it's kind of a dungy dirty place normally but in this case they repurposed it revitalized it and it's now a big draw and then in like the pop art one um it was essentially where like there's no roof on the building anymore. So you're sort of walking through what would have been an empty building at one time. And same thing, people have just painted different sections along the walls. There's QR codes so that you can scan and you can get more information on the author, more information on the art. You can donate to the work to keep it going. Um, but I have to say that, you know, we actually went back there twice because we just realized we, we didn't take it all in the first time and you see things more you know the more times you go so i don't know i was just really enthralled with all of that <laughs> we we wandered around san angelo a number of times and i think part of it is there's a lot going on there's so many different parts to that town and like i said the, the different personalities and all the different art displays and you do miss stuff and so if you have a chance to walk around a couple times maybe walk around downtown stop and get a bite to eat at one of the good restaurants downtown and then go walk some more and see what else you can find or wander past something again and, and especially the the paintbrush alley. I we must have gone through that several times. I think, and every time we walked through, we'd spot something else that we didn't realize uh, the first time what it was. So it was really neat to do that. And I think that's just another way San Angelo is trying to connect with everybody, with mm -hmm. with visitors and the locals, and get everybody to to kind of feel as part of one. It was really neat to see it. If you've walked around San Angelo and you think you've done everything there is to do downtown, you can go a few miles out of town and check out one of our favorite things that we found in San Angelo, the Donkey Rescue. <laughs> the Donkey Rescue Ranch was really fun. Um, it is free to go out there. You call ahead and, and make sure that they're open as you can get in it. And really, that's because they want to make sure they have enough staff on hand to, to show you around. If you want to see some of the donkeys while you're there, they do accept donations. Uh, but it is free to go see that. And there are, uh, I don't know, thousands of donkeys and <laughs> I mules. Don't I don't know if it was thousands, hundreds, maybe it thousands. It was a lot. It was a lot. Of <laughs> they're so cute. Oh, my gosh. And they have them from, you know, really old. It was funny. They had one area that's kind of like the, the senior home, right? It's this one corral where it's all these really ancient donkeys. And there's there's one, like the oldest donkey on the property just wanders free. He, he just kind of moseys around. He's not doing anything. He's, He's biding his time. Um, uh, but then they also have, uh, you know, newborns. Uh, you can see when they're there. I mean, yeah. we got to see some of those in their own pen before they were kind of introduced to the rest of the herd. So yeah, that, was, that was really neat. The Donkey Rescue is helping take in donkeys from essentially all over the world, uh, whether they you know, came from a home that could no longer support them. In fact, we learned the federal government considers them an invasive species, despite the fact that the federal government brought them here to help build the railways and build America. But nevertheless, they're now an invasive species. And so they don't want them out in like the, st the national parks anymore, or the national land. And so... Um, the nice way of getting rid of them is is luckily bringing them to the do donkey rescue where they're going to get sort of rehabilitated and then homed out to, you know, you could get, anybody can get a donkey as long as you can take care of it. Um, I think it's like 
Three hundred bucks. I mean, it's cheap. Go buy a donkey. It was, yeah, it was only three or three fifty, and then <laughs> yeah. you got to you got to calculate I'm, food, right? right. <laughs> they probably eat a lot. You, you got to do you know consider your vet costs and your food. But I mean, I know a lot of people have horses and goats and pigs, and if you got a farm, I mean, why not add a donkey? They're adorable. Um, but a lot, of, you know, they do take them in, and and there was in one case uh, a woman who had like a whole herd of miniature donkeys. And then when she passed away, the family didn't know what to do with them. So now they're at the donkey rescue. Yeah, she was kind of like a, a cat lady, but yeah. with donkeys. <laughs> so it was a little tougher when they had to, to clean that all up. But uh, yeah, it was interesting to hear about that. And they've done a really good job there with with um, getting them where they can be adopted out. And there's some though that, that can never be there. There's just issues with them and there's something wrong. They're just never going to be tame enough really or docile enough to, to be with someone in, in their property. So they, but they'll keep them. I mean, that's what they're there for. And that's why they accept the donations. And that's where the money goes when you adopt a donkey is, mm -hmm. is, is, you know, helping to maintain that space there for them. But I have to say that was probably one of the highlights of our trip to San Angelo. And that was something we learned about at the visitor center that we would have had no idea even existed. So that's why, you know, I, I make it a point of make sure you stop and find out those things because we would have missed one of our favorite attractions. Um, and it was just really nice. I mean, you could you can go in and pet them and they and they like I said the baby donkeys were there and they were adorable. You do have to watch your clothing because they will come up and try to like nibble on you and so you got to make sure that you know your surroundings at all time. They don't mean any harm. They're not mean or anything, but they they're sort of like goats. They might, they're just going to try to like eat your your skirt or your shorts or whatever. Um, and then they kind of have some other farm animals there as well. Ham and bacon, the pigs and, um, goats. and a couple goats and some things. So uh, it was just really cool. But, you know, yeah, make sure you call ahead because, you know, they just need to know that you're coming because it is a working operation. It's not it's not like a petting zoo. <laughs> Definitely worth the drive out there to check out the donkeys. Uh, and then, you know, when you're done there, you can head back town to town and wander around a little bit more or stop and have ice cream, which is what we did, of course, because that's what we do. We I hike mean, and we eat ice cream. Right. It's the <laughs> You have to check out the latest scoop. It's uh, it's all homemade ice cream, very unique flavors, in addition to your, your traditionals. But they've got some unique ones there. And um, yes, I mean... Hello, it's ice cream. We're never going to turn ice cream down. So there's, I mean, there was some good food in Austin. I think we had, we had, I mean, San Angelo. I mean, in San, Austin. We didn't, we didn't go to Austin. We didn't even go to Austin. No, we did. We, we drove through Austin drove on the through way out of town. Um, there's really good food in Austin. I have been to Austin. Go to Austin and get your barbecue. In the state capital. Um, you got to see yeah. the state capital. But yeah. in San Angelo, I think we had Mexican. We had barbecue. We had really good burgers. I mean, there's actually a lot of everything there. It sort of melds a lot of different things there. But um, but the ice cream, it's really all about the ice cream. <laughs> so clearly there is a lot to do in the San Angelo area because we got three videos. Out of it. Right. <laughs> so, and uh, one thing we didn't really mention because we didn't really do it was was the water. There are a few, in, in addition to the river, there are a few lakes in the area. Uh, we mentioned the OC Fisher Reservoir in our state park video where you can kind of boat, but not really. Uh, but there is or are one or two other lakes nearby that are, you know, more for recreational things. So if that's kind of your cup of tea, you know, that's available as well. So just wanted to make that point. Yeah, I was going to say, plenty to see and do in the area. You could spend a long weekend. You could spend a week. You could spend more, depending on where you want to <laughs> stay and what you want to see and how you want to do it. So consider checking out San Angelo. Get to Texas. Check it out. Get out and check out something. <laughs> Keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there. <laughs>